lovely friends, it's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be figuring out what I am reading for the month of January. If you are new to the channel, I have a TBR game called Fable that I use to help me choose what books I am going to read every month. It's really simple. I pick out a certain number of quests or prompts, match books to those quests, and then try and read all of those books by the end of the month. And if I don't read them, I face consequences. Those consequences affect what books I can use to fulfill certain quests for the next month. And so the goal is for me to finish as many of the books that I choose in each of these videos as possible. Don't have much else that I need to get y'all caught up on except for the fact that uh, we're doing the 12 Days of Margaret and if you haven't watched any of the other videos I'll have the playlist. We are going to keep this short, sweet, and to the point. Now we have been on quite a few adventures with Magdalene, the most recent of which is her and her companions coming back to Farwater to find the blacksmith dead in his shop. This put a slight pause in their plan to break into the alchemist's tower and steal back the dragon's egg. It felt like maybe, maybe they shouldn't be committing more crimes when they just discovered a dead body. And so Magdalene and her friends returned back to their kind of normal lodging house for when they are in the city and ended up picking up a possible new job. Now we pick up with Magdalene and her friends a little bit later that evening as they are sitting in the common room of this lodging house just having a few drinks, relaxing a little bit. They are waiting for this new employer to show up. There were a few things he needed to confirm before he gave them all of the details they would need to know. Now Magdalene and her party are not just here in the common room to wait for their new patron. As you might suspect of someone who has recently discovered a dead body, they have a few questions. So they are also at the tavern just listening in to the other conversations around them, listening to what people have to say about this murder, trying to see if they can glean any information. There's obviously some idle chatter about the murder, there's some speculation going on, and they're just listening and cataloging everything that they hear. They don't get to listen to very much though before their new patron shows up. The man who approaches them is of middling age. He does not look wealthy, but he does have an air of carefully constructed neutrality about him. The gentleman approaches them, pulling up a chair and ordering another round of ale for the whole table. He waits until the barmaid has returned with the most recent round of their drinks, distributed them, and headed back off before he sits down and begins speaking with them. He mentions that he is speaking for a large group of people. He and his compatriots believe that magical creatures are being kidnapped and sold on Fablin's black market and he would like to get an idea of who is in charge of this. He has the address for where he believes some of these creatures are being kept. He wants Magdalene and her crew to accompany him as he goes to investigate this address, just in case it is not the empty warehouse it seems to be from the outside. Now, as they listen to him explain the situation, the dragon's egg that they have been trying to retrieve comes to mind. They know it was stolen by the dragon that has taken up residence near Farwater, and they know that the alchemist has it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the alchemist is the one that stole that egg. Seeing that this job may give them some of the answers that they are already searching for, the party accepts. Why not get paid for what you are already doing? Adventurers are always needing new gear, so Magdalene and her party do head down to Bertrand's general store to pick up a few things. Of course, considering that this quest is taking place in the city of Farwater where they live, it's a rather short shopping trip. It is well past midnight when our adventurers meet up with the patron that they have amongst themselves begun referring to as the Grey Man. They follow him quietly through the city, winding through the streets until they arrive at a warehouse near the docks. And here is where we come to our first consequence. Ta da Consequence for me not completing this quest is if I roll lower than a six, I will have to restart this quest with a completely different book, which means I will be starting next month with nine quests instead of eight. All right, that is a 15. The warehouse, when they enter it, appears deserted. As they make their way further into the darkness, they hear an odd, wet sound. It's erratic, there's not really a pattern to it, but they just hear it slap, 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 somewhere in the darkness. The party pauses, their hands going to their weapons, but the gray man forges on into the darkness, conjuring in his hand a small ball of light. The light reflects against, the light reflects off of something in the back. Something that is oddly 
glass-like, but seems to not be solid. As they approach, they discover that what they are looking at is a glass tank, half full of water, with a mesh covering the top. They approach this tank and look down through the iron lattice locked over the top of this tank. The slow slapping they heard was the sound of her hands against the water as she tried to reach up to the mesh to get out. Now in a party of two thieves and a few magicians, it is short work getting that lock undone and the mesh removed from the tank. They find the evidence that this warehouse was recently vacated. It seems they were either interrupted while getting all of the creatures out and were not able to come back for the mermaid, or they simply forgot her tucked away in her tank in her little corner. This mermaid is malnourished and sick from staying in the dirty water, so with all of them working together, they get her out and then take her back to a place that the gray man says she will be able to rest and recover and receive medical treatment. Now, the house that our questing party ends up helping the gray man transport this mermaid to is a very spare house. It's very clear that this is meant to be somewhere that people stay for a, a moment and then move on. Something that is meant to be nondescript and not attract attention, but also is not meant to be a home. And as they are sitting there in the early morning hours discussing their most recent mission amongst themselves, they come to the conclusion that this man may be able to help them. So they decide that they are going to take a chance and explain the situation with the alchemist and the dragon's egg and all of that and see if possibly that would be connected to what he's dealing with. Seeing as they have a common goal, the gray man offers to reach out to the people he works for and see if they may have more information that the party can act upon. He goes upstairs for a few minutes promising that he is going to get in contact with the senior members of his organization and comes back about half an hour later with a little bit of information that he thinks may be useful to them. Far Water is one that has been built and rebuilt over and over again and comes back about half an hour later with a little bit of information that he thinks may be useful to them. As with many cities in Fablen, Far Water is one that has been built and rebuilt over and over again and down below the cobblestones of the streets. There are catacombs. These catacombs have been there since before the tower was built, so if there is a secret room, it is most likely connected to the tunnel work that is already beneath the city. Now, since these catacombs are where the city buries their dead, they're not exactly a secret, and the entrances and exits to it are all well marked. And so we find our party at the door of the entrance closest to the alchemist's tower. And here we come to our second consequence of the day, video, whatever you want to call it. Okay, perfect, that is an 11. Being that the catacombs are underground and dark and full of dead people, it won't surprise you to find that the door is locked. However, as we've mentioned before, we do have a couple of people who are relatively decent at picking locks, and so they are able to unlock that door and make their way down into the darkness. And that is where we are going to leave Magdalene and her friends as we figure out what's on the docket for next month. January is going to be a pretty chill month for me. I haven't really made a lot of ambitious plans, at least not like readathon reading wise. There are only a couple of things that I am participating in. Obviously, we're going to have the Eras Reading Challenge. If you don't know what that is, there's a video up here, but it's uh, basically Taylor Swift songs as books. Obviously, I have the Eras Reading Challenge that I am going to be trying to participate in since I am the one that created it. Um, if you haven't heard of that yet and you're a Taylor Swift fan, you might want to check it out up here. We are going to be reading books based on prompts inspired by Taylor Swift songs. I also know that I need to read Arusha and the Tree of Wishes. We put the R squared read along on a brief pause in December, but we will be back in January. We're going to talk about Arusha and the Song of Death, and then we are also going to be reading Arusha and the Tree of Wishes. If I can fit that on my TBR, that would be fantastic because I, that is like the one book that I absolutely have to read this month because I'm supposed to be able to sit down and discuss it with my friend. So... There we are. I also have a couple of reading projects I'm working on. I'm not going to talk to you about one of them because it's a secret, but I am working on reading through the winner and the loser of each genre for the 2022 Goodreads Choice Awards. So I would like to get some of those books on my TBR so that like, I'd like to, to maybe not have these be vlogs that take me seven years to do as I typically, you know, as, as, as happens. So... Anyways, let's see what is in store for me. This one is visit to the blacksmith's shop, read a book with a, re a weapon. I can talk. Read a book with a weapon on the cover. And if I fail this quest, I have to roll with disadvantage on all consequence rolls. Um, well, the last time we went to the blacksmith's shop, there was a murder. So 
that should make things interesting. For that, I am going to be reading The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Uh, so this is a, about Avery. She's a regular teen trying to survive hope Post school? Post school. She is a regular teen trying to survive high school. And then this billionaire who she does not know dies and has apparently left her his entire fortune. Um, and so that means she's moving into his house, which also has all of his relatives that were cut out of the will, including uh, four of his grandsons, I believe it is. Yeah, his grandsons, the Hawthorne boys. And so this is about, this is about that. It has a dagger on the cover and I will need to read the third book in this series for the Goodreads Choice Project. So I figured why not use this as a chance to get started on it. Going in for prompt number two. This is one of the new ones. Traveling through the wilderness, read a book with nature imagery on the cover. If I fail this quest, I have to add pages to a quest. The number of pages will be equal to a d6 times 10. We are going with How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. This is about uh, a virus that is unleashed. It's known as the Arctic virus because it's found in a like frozen specimen that's discovered in the Arctic and it sweeps through the city, the, not the city, the, the planet and changes a whole bunch of things. Doesn't sound familiar at all, does it? No. Um, so that's, that's what this one is about. It has the sun and moons on the cover. So we're gonna, that's what it's gonna do. Going in for prompt number three. Oh, and I only have to do eight this month. That's fantastic. Riddle contest with the bridge troll. Read a book with an ugly cover. If I fail this, I need to add one quest to my usual quest load. This one was a hard call because I don't really have any like ugly, ugly covers, but I am gonna go with Now Is Not The Time To Panic by Kevin Wilson. This was the, this is on the wrong side. Um, this is the novel that had the least number of votes in the fiction category, and that's one of the first genres that I will be tackling. It's about, like it starts out with two teens and they create some sort of art and the art starts showing up everywhere and then we catch up again with one of the teens later when she is an adult. I don't entirely understand it but it sounds like like either something is surfacing or someone's asking questions and kind of threatening um, the life that she currently has as an adult. So I, here we go. Prompt number four is this one and of course it's rolled backwards. Uh, a Night at the Halfling Farm, read a collection of short works, poetry, short stories, essays. Choose a book 50 pages longer than your finished book to fulfill a quest. Well, fudge. I guess I'm going to use this as a chance to get into one of the books that has been on my physical TBR for a very long time. And that is Because You Love to Hate Me, edited by Amory and then written by various, um, it's a like bunch of villainous stories written by several popular YA authors and then they also had um, 13 booktubers collaborate in with them in these 13 stories. I'm not sure, entirely sure how that um, collaboration works, but it, here it is. Here we are. Yes, four prompts down and five to go. So the, I guess I guess this is the one we're doing. Uh, trip to the next town over. Read an SFF book that is under 300 pages, and I will roll with disadvantage on all consequence rolls if I don't. If I, if I fail this quest. Okay, hold on. I am going to go with Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a book that it's following like three different timelines, I believe. And all of these people seem to have some sort of encounter with, with something that pulled, like they're from different timelines, but they're all pulled into the same place through, I think, a door or something. I don't know. It's been a while since I read the, the synopsis, but it sounded interesting when I read it. And I have this gorgeous, um, sprayed edges cover that I couldn't help getting at like you know when the book the Barnes and Noble have 50% off on hardcovers and it's got sprayed edges. Prompt number three is going to be 72 crossing on the ferry read a book with a river or stream on the cover um, and then I have to start this quest over from the beginning aka with a new book if I fail. This could be a swamp it could be a river who knows I'm gonna go with Deadly Waters though by Dot Hutchison We'll stretch it. It's fine. It is some sort of water in a stream-like configuration on this cover, and that's, we're gonna read it. This is about a journalism student who is drawn in to this kind of thing where there are a bunch of, this is about a journalism student, and I believe she's getting involved in an investigation where people keep turning up dead in these, like, swamps with alligators having eaten them, and she's starting to suspect that the person doing it might be her roommate. I tried to start this at the end of the month last month and then was like there's no way I'm going to be able to finish all of it so I just put it to the side and we'll be trying to get to it this month. Let's explore the old mine. Read a book that was added to your TBR over a year ago. Okay.
That's a hard choice. I'm gonna go with The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is one of, Rachel Hawkins is the author of the adult series Hex Hall, but she also has started branching out into kind of these thriller retellings of classic novels. In this case, it is a story about, um, in Jane Eyre, the Mrs. Rochester who lives in the attic. This is talking about her. I guess from her point of view, something like that. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see where she takes this because, I mean, it wasn't perfectly handled in Jane Eyre the book, but like, I kind of don't have a problem. I know a lot of people have a problem with it, but I don't have a problem with, especially considering the time, that particular plot point. Okay, and the final prompt. Oh, that's two of them. Well, I'm not picking up either of those. We'll pick this one. Prompt number eight is going to be Encounter with a Barrowrite. Read the oldest book on a TBR. A TBR. We may be stretching the definition of TBR a little bit here, but I'm going to read Ruth Ware's The Death of Mrs. Westaway. This is, I don't know, there's no description on the back of it. Some lady is dead, and I am assuming we are going to be in, in investigating, that's the word, investigating her murder. If you are noticing in the, a pattern, uh, in a few books on this TBR. No, you are not. Just pretend you didn't see it. This is um, a book by Ruth Ware. I've never read anything by her before, but I've heard interesting things, so I do want to like, like I want to try out a Ruth Ware book. I just haven't yet. And here we have a nice stack of not chunky books to start our year off. I would love to know something that you are planning to read in the month of January or something you're looking forward to reading soon. For my Fablin peeps, I am planning on doing an update to the TBR game here in the next month or so, but when I am trying to get a video out every day for 12 days, not really the time for me to sit down and figure out and type up and do all of that work. So it's going to come sometime later in the month, but do keep your eyes out for that. Speaking of 12 Days of Margaret, I'm doing a whole bunch of year-end content. Starts on my birthday, goes until 12 days after my birthday. So if you want to see more of my end of the year content, check out the video that is right over here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you're feeling so inclined, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy nerdy things. Bye!